Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about one of the uh, weed control issues that we're really starting to see show up around the state of Michigan, and that's rough stock bluegrass. And kind of what I've put on here on the title slide is, should we be concerned? And what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about what we've been seeing with rough stock bluegrass over the last uh, three years that we've been doing research on it and tell you a little bit more about what to look for and what are some of our potential options to actually manage rough stock bluegrass. So one of the things that we see um, in wheat fields about this time of year is if we have rough stock bluegrass is a pro as a problem, we will see right now um, that golden brown color of rough stock bluegrass. It has uh, actually started to turn about a week ago or so. So as you're driving by wheat fields and you see this uh, golden colored weed that's sticking up above the uh, green wheat heads, a lot of, you'll know that that's rough stock bluegrass. So um, this is just a picture of a field that uh, where rough stock bluegrass is very heavily infested. To tell you a little bit about rough stock bluegrass, it is uh, one of the bluegrass species and it is a cool season grass species. So um, you often think of it kind of similar to a winter annual type uh, weed. However, it is a perennial uh, weed species. Um, it does have above ground stolons, but uh, when we see it in wheat, a lot of times it looks more like an annual. We don't usually see it long enough to be able to see those stolons. And we believe that in wheat is really actually spread by seed and not necessarily that kind of perennial life form. Um, a lot of times uh, where this weed has been a problem traditionally has been in turf grass settings. Um, it also can be an issue for hay growers. So a lot of people that have uh, been in the hay business have seen this as a huge problem and it really helped or really hurts the marketability of some of those hay crops. But again, we are seeing more of it showing up in a lot of our winter wheat fields. Some of the characteristics of rough stock bluegrass, if you're looking at identifying it, is actually looking at um, uh, a couple of things to uh, point out. One of the things is that it has a very long pointed ligules that are membranous. So you can see by this picture here in the middle of the screen, um, you can see where that point of those ligules are. Um, they're very long. Another thing that's very characteristic of rough stock bluegrass is it has very rough leaf sheaths. So if you were to take your fingers and pull, um, rub them up and down the leaf sheaths of rough stock bluegrass, it is a very rough, almost like a sandpaper feel type uh, to it. Um, it also has a, a loose green panicle as it starts to flower that again will turn a golden brown. One of the key things with rough stock bluegrass is they can get to be fairly uh, large in size. Again, poking up against above that, uh, those wheat heads. Um, oftentimes we see it anywhere from one to three feet tall. Um, one of the other things that uh, we tend to see in winter wheat is annual bluegrass. So how is rough stock bluegrass different than um, annual bluegrass? Well, if you look at a few of the pictures, what we usually see with annual bluegrass is there it's usually lower growing to the ground. It often grows in clumps. Uh, another key characteristic of annual bluegrass is it has kind of a boat shaped leaf tip that you can see on the screen here in the middle uh, with the middle picture. And then also the ligule is also membranous, but it is more rounded than what we would see with rough stock bluegrass. And it does have smooth leaf sheaths. So there's a, a big difference there. The other thing is, is annual bluegrass does not um, tend to get to the size that we see with rough stock bluegrass. Generally, we see it anywhere from three to 12 inches tall. So fairly short, fairly clumpy. The other thing we do notice is a lot of times annual bluegrass starts to put those seed heads on before what we see with the rough stock bluegrass. And we'll talk about how that can affect control in a few minutes. Um, one of the things that we've done is because we didn't really know much about rough stock bluegrass is try to track its emergence and growth through the season. So we've done this over the last three years. 
And one of the things that we have seen is a lot of times rough stock bluegrass tends to be a fall emerging weed species. So a lot of times we'll see it coming up about the same time as winter wheat. However, unlike some of our other uh, grass species, for example, uh, common wind grass, we do see some spring emergence and that can actually um, help change some of the management techniques that we'll look at. And I'll talk to you about how that might affect. So it primarily comes up in the fall, but we do see some spring emergence of rough stock bluegrass. Once it comes up and once um, the weather starts to warm up a little bit, it rapidly progresses through its life cycle. So here are some pictures that I took this year. Um, you can see on April 18th, even with the cool weather that we had this year, uh, rough stock bluegrass was actively growing. You can see it was about uh, uh, three to four inches tall on April 18th. And by April 27th, we were getting quite a bit of uh, growth on that rough stock bluegrass. Um, and in general, over the last three years, we've tended to see that it starts to head out between the first and third weeks of May. So here's a picture from this year. Um, on May 6th, you can start to see the uh, seed head of rough stock bluegrass coming through. Um, and at this time, we really start to see a huge decrease in the activity of many of the herbicides that we can use. And we'll talk about um, how that actually affects control. Um, about one to two weeks later, uh, we tend to see full flower of rough, rough stock bluegrass. So we're, we're talking the last part of May. So in general, by this time, um, control measures, um, if they haven't been implemented, um, we're probably not going to have very many options to control it this year. And then usually one to two weeks later, we tend to see um, a golden color turning of rough stock bluegrass and that's at maturity and that usually occurs in the first or second week of June. So um, on June 2nd we were uh, doing some uh, flyover pictures of our plots. The rough stock bluegrass was still green and then basically by the 7th that had turned a golden brown. So we're usually starting to see about this time period where we'll see that golden color from bluegrass. So should we be concerned about rough stock bluegrass? Well, in many of the fields that we've seen with this weed, it is um, a very prevalent weed species at very high densities. And when we've done some yield work, we've seen that we can uh, rough stock bluegrass can actually reduce yield by up to 50%. So it is a big concern. So it's one of those things that we need to plan on um, if it is in your area or in some of your fields to make sure that we have good control of this weed. So what are some of the things that we can do to control rough stock bluegrass? Well, what I'm gonna do now is talk about some of the herbicide options that are out there that are generally out there for grass control and some of the ones that we've actually studied. And what I have here is a chart of uh, the wheat growth stages, um, and this is a uh, Feeks growth stage chart, basically talking about the time of application that these herbicides can be applied. So for example, one of the herbicides that we looked at was Osprey, um, that can be basically applied all the way up till joining, another, um, an, and from the fall till joining. Powerflux HL is another grass herbicide that we looked at that can be applied when, in the fall once um, wheat has three leaves up through jointing. Um, Axial Bold, which is a newer herbicide that has replaced Axial XL. It is a premixture of two grass herbicides that can be applied anywhere from emergence of um, wheat all the way up to feet stage 7.9. So um, a little bit further. So we have a little bit more time frame there. And then there is a new premixture out, Osprey Extra, that we looked at. So what we did this last year is spent some time uh, looking at some different application timings of many of these herbicides. We did some fall applications uh, once rough stock bluegrass is up and once wheat was at uh, basically that relief stage. So um, usually about three to four weeks after wheat planting. Um, so our fall applications were on October 17th this last year. We also looked at early post applications um, in this case, so when wheat was at peak stage four, 
and that was on April 18th, and then some later applications on May 5th. And as I mentioned, uh, rough stock bluegrass really tends to get some size. So you can see kind of the comparison on here of what the size of those weeds were um, at the time of application. Again, uh, these are the herbicides that we looked at, um, uh, the use rates that we looked at. So these are just our standard, standard use rates, and then the application times. Um, I do want to point out that uh, Asprey Extra was uh, new this year, so we did not have it in our full application timing. But we did look at it as an early post timing, and we did, I'm um, uh, sorry to put this on here, we did look at it as a post timing to see how it worked. When we look at these wheat or these different herbicides, they are mostly targeting grass weed control. However, the herbicides PowerFlex, HL, and Asprey Extra can give us some broadleaf weed control particularly weeds um, like common chickweed. Um, both of the weeds or the components in there are group two herbicides. So when we looked at all these herbicides, we looked at them alone, and we also tank mixed them with Husky to help pick up some other broadleaf weed control. And then we looked at Osprey and Axial Bold um, also with the herbicide Talanor. So uh, here are some overview shots of some of our plots and just want to talk to you about um, what these look like. You can see um, we've got um, our trial here and you can see that kind of lighter green color and that is the rough stock bluegrass growing up um, above the wheat. Um, these are our fall applications. Our aerial images were taken on June 2nd. Um, you can see where our untreateds are that are highlighted here in red. Um, our Husky application, which would be a primarily a broadleaf herbicide. This is an early spring application. Um, and you can see that it doesn't have activity on uh, rough stock bluegrass control, but we put it in there as kind of a check to see uh, if we would see any control or to see if we would see any more injury when we take mixed Husky with some of our uh, grass herbicides. Um, the blue boxes here show Osprey, and we actually had fairly decent control from our fall applications. Here's kind of a close-up of looking at um, what a broadleaf herbicide versus Osprey in the fall look like. Um, it's not 100%. Again, remember I said we do have some spring emergence, so it's um, not going to control it completely, but it can reduce that population quite a bit. And we had about 85% control with Osprey. Um, with the other fall applications, we did see some uh, control with Axial Bold. We had about 70% control. Those are the purple boxes that we see here. And our poorest control was with uh, PowerFlex. And you can see where there is some of the rough stock bluegrass showing up above um, that wheat canopy. Next, we're going to talk about our early spring results. And you can see here again our application timing. Um, and we have our untreated and husky applications highlighted here, and we'll compare some of these um, other herbicides to those. So Osprey, we had very good control from our early spring applications. Again, that was um, April 18th when rough stock bluegrass was two to four inches tall. We had really good control again with Osprey Extra and then Axial Bold. So all three of these um, alone and then with husky, so we did the tank mixes, we didn't see any decreases in um, grass control, and then obviously we picked up broadleaf weed control with the Husky, and we saw that rough stock bluegrass control was greater than 90% with all these applications. So here's just a few pictures uh, depicting that. So Husky alone, Osprey plus Husky in the upper um, right corner, the lower left corner, Axial Bold plus Husky, and then Osprey Extra plus Husky um, in the lower right hand corner. Um, so we're having uh, really good luck with all three of these herbicides and controlling rough stock bluegrass. Um, with our PowerFlex uh, applications, we did see some lower control um, alone and with Husky, and control generally was about 75%. So we were able to reduce those populations, but not to the extent of what we saw with the other uh, herbicides. Um, our late spring results, remember that's those applications that occurred when wheat was at peak stage five on May 5th. 
and um, our approximate rough stock bluegrass height was about 10 inches tall. So it was starting to, the uh, seed heads were starting to come out of rough stock bluegrass. So we did see some lower control and we have these kind of different boxes depicting those colors. And in general control about 21 days after treatment was around 65 to 70% with all the different herbicides. So um, those later applications um, are generally not going to provide great control. Uh, they may set rough stock bluegrass back, but it's best to get in there with those early applications. One of the big challenges that we had with this year was that, um, if everybody remembers, we had some very cold conditions during the time that we would generally spray wheat. Um, our general rule of thumb has always been to try to get those daily temperatures um, of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Um, in many days, we had a hard time getting to that temperature, and then we had a lot of nights where the temperatures dropped below 32. Um, with that, uh, we did do some um, ap herbicide applications, and what we saw was some slower activity on the rough stock bluegrass for control. We did see some injury. That injury tended to be more when we tink mixed husky or talonor with those grass herbicides. That injury range on that wheat was 10 to 15%. Generally, what we saw was a lighter color and a slight reduction in wheat height, but the wheat outgrew that injury. And right now you can't tell any differences um, as far as how the wheat looks. And then the injury with the grass herbicides alone were about 5%. So just kind of as a quick overview, just wanna go through um, how each one of these herbicides performed. And then I also wanted to compare it to some of the other grass herbicides that we are seeing in wheat, such as annual bluegrass, and then also windgrass, which we see uh, tend to see more up in the thumb. Um, with axial bulb, we know with our early spring applications, we can have good to excellent control of rough stock bluegrass and good control of windgrass. Um, we do not see really any control of annual bluegrass. With osprey and osprey extra, we've had good to excellent control of both rough stock bluegrass and windgrass from fall applications. Remember, uh, we can still have a little bit of emergence in the spring of the rough stock bluegrass. Early spring applications, we have excellent control of uh, rough stock bluegrass and windgrass. And we can get good control of annual bluegrass, but it's very important to make sure those applications are made prior to flowering. As the season gets later, remember um, the control will drop off. Power flex. Um, is an excellent windgrass um, herbicide. It also does provide good control of annual bluegrass when um, those applications are made prior to flowering. Um, it hasn't been as effective over the last three years as what we've seen with the osprey or axial bulb on rockstock bluegrass. So in general, our recommendations are um, rockstock bluegrass needs to be controlled or we can see some significant yield loss. Um, in, we tend to recommend those early spring applications of Osprey, now the new product Osprey Extra, and Axial Bold, um, or Axial Bold, and generally we'd like to apply that when the rough stock bluegrass is less than four inches tall. Um, if you're using a full application, it will be able to reduce rough stock bluegrass populations, and that'll probably help limit yield loss, and we'll be able to uh, look at that yield loss potential um, uh, from this year's trials. Our later spring applications really should be avoided really due to that poor control and that's usually when we see that early flowering and we'll see some yield reductions from rough stock bluegrass competition. So kind of a few take home messages. Um, be on the lookout for rough stock bluegrass. Right now is a perfect time to scout for it and see if it's in your area and um, or in some of your wheat fields. And if rough stock bluegrass is anticipated um, really think about using Osprey, Osprey Extra, or Axial Bold um, as a component of your overall weed management program. And again, these herbicides can be tank mixed with things like Husky and Talonor to help pick up uh, more broadly weed control. Really like to thank the Michigan Wheat Program for um, support of this project. And then also I will put up here um, some of the uh, participation guide. Um, if anybody has questions, they can ask those or enter those into the chat box. Uh, thank you, Christy. Uh, there is a one question already that's come in. It's are you, 
there are any concerns if cover crops are being planted after wheat? That is a really good question. Um, there, last year we did, um, we did some uh, preliminary trials looking at um, some of the different herbicides. We looked at about nine different herbicides and nine different cover crops. In general, most of them fared well. We did see some reductions um, with uh, Osprey um, and a couple of the others on uh, things like uh, Austrian winter pea. Um, and again, this is just some preliminary work. We do need to do some more work on this and we're kind of looking for funding to be able to uh, study this a little bit further in the future. Thank you. We have another question. Downy brome grass control measures the same. Downy brome grass, that's a really good question. Um, we, the one herbicide that is uh, very good on downy brome is PowerFlex. So um, that is one that um, you would, if you have that as an issue, that would be one that I would try to incorporate into your weed management program and still looking at those uh, early spring applications. Another question, can control chemicals be applied with 28% in the spring? Um, we had done some work on this and in general, we had um, good results if we did kind of a 50-50 mix, 50% uh, of the 28% um, UAN versus, with water versus 100%. When we do 100%, we tend to see a lot more burn. In some cases, and we've got these recommendations in the weed guide, you may want to cut back on your uh, surfactant load uh, to um, minimize that. One other thing I do want to point out is there's a couple of questions. If you could answer those, that would be great. Um, and then if you are seeing rough stock bluegrass, if you could just include what county you're from in the chat box, that'll give us a good air, um, an idea of where rough stock bluegrass is showing up around the state of Michigan. Once again, uh, the poll is up, so um, get your clickers out. Uh, we will have the results shortly. So. There is one more question. Um, and is there any yield drag with power flex or husky when used to control wind grass? So uh, power flex, so husky will not control wind grass. Now power flex um, can be tank mixed with husky. Um, with wind grass control, uh, well, we've done a lot of studies where we've looked at uh, power flex and husky tank mixes and just looked at yield and really have not seen uh, any re reduction in yield. So, um, you know, and when you start looking at the yield potential that you would lose if you don't control wind grass or rough stock bluegrass or some of these, um, I think that those herbicides are very important to get into a system to make sure you're controlling those weeds. Okay, so we have um, some growers that have seen rough stock bluegrass, so about 36%, and then a lot of it is on a low percentage of acres. So uh, thank you for um, answering that poll, that's great. And um, I think from there, Dave, we'll go ahead and turn it back over to you to announce the next speaker and I will uh, stop sharing. <laughs>